You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. You can uh, shoot me an email for feedback at linux at quicksurf.com, Q-U-I-C-K-S-U-R-F.com. This is all linked up in the show notes. Um, also, if you have not already done so, please do subscribe to the show. You can uh, find all the subscription links over at quicksurf.com in the show notes for each and every episode. You can subscribe to an Og Vorbis feed, an MP3 feed, and a video feed that's compatible with a fairly wide range of devices out there. Um, you can also find us online over at youtube.com, blip.tv, Daily Motion, Stitcher Radio over at stitcher.com, and tunein.com. So, uh, there's a variety of ways that uh, you can uh, follow and get the new episodes as they are released. Let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode from Engadget. Linux Mint 15 hits the web, begs for Olivia Munn endorsement. Now, the new version of Linux Mint is Olivia, is the name of it. Um, so anyway, it comes in two distinct flavors, cinnamon and mate. Both have received a bit of polish. Uh, the fresher cinnamon has gotten the most attention. Version 1.8 of the desktop environment has gotten lots of bug fixes. Uh, there's a new dedicated settings panel that bypasses the GNOME control center. Um, they've added support for desklets, which are basically widgets. And ha they've also added uh, to the um, login screen is completely customizable through HTML5. So uh, both of both of the desktops get Mint sources, so you can manage your software repositories, Mint drivers for managing drivers, et cetera, et cetera. Pretty interesting. Definitely check it out, especially if you're a previous version of Linux Mint user. From PCMag.com, there's an article here by John C. Dvorak, and uh, I typically don't comment or provide links to anything that he... Uh, writes simply because sometimes he can be a little inflammatory, if you will. Uh, anyway, this is entitled, Woe is Linux, Woe is Me. And basically, he provides some commentary on uh, Mark Shuttleworth, the founder of Canonical, giving up on the idea. You know, we all heard that he closed the first bug, you know, uh, uh, posted to Ubuntu simply because, um, you know, Ubuntu had not overtaken Windows or Microsoft. And, uh, Basically, uh, John Dvorak here says that, um, you know, lots of stuff. The reason why Linux has not overtaken Windows and we're looking at potentially Android and iOS being the dominant uh, operating systems of the future is that uh, uh, lots, you know, m for the most part, most of the Linux and open source community does not believe in you know, proper marketing, you know, and I've discovered this. I mean, we, we've covered Linux here for going on, gosh darn, just about 10 years now. And uh, more often than not, the attitude is, oh, hey, here's some sources, check it out. And it's up to the user to, you know, go and download it, compile it, debug it, get it working in their environment. You know, there's there's no been real even Red Hat and Ubuntu haven't done any real advertising like you see Microsoft and Apple do. And, you know, it's hurt Linux to a large degree. Uh, so it, the reason why I'm including this story is because everything that he writes here for a, the most part, I pretty much agree with. You know, I mean, this is I've seen this covering Linux in open source here at Lin, on Linux News Log since 2004. I've seen this firsthand more often than not you know it's it's never been uh you know let's get some marketing out there spend a little bit of money to get it on tv and get some mass you know attention it's always been word of mouth and in many ways even though i produce this show and i do occasionally carry advertising you know 
much of what I talk about here is literally free advertising for everybody that I talk about. Every time a new uh, distribution is released that's a relatively popular distribution, I'm talking about it here. Every time some company does something that's Linux, I'm talking about it here. And, you know, this, I don't take any money from any of those people. This is all just me trying to get the word out. And, um, you know, it's been an uphill battle the entire time. Do I have an audience here? Sure I do, you know, but me alone is not doing it. So, and to a large degree, no one has, you know, none of these Linux companies have really decided to market what they're selling with any kind of marketing plans that you see at other tech companies like Microsoft and Apple. Two perfect examples. Anyway, definitely check the story out. I agree with him on this. Um, you know, it's a sad state of affairs, and I don't think it's going to get any better. From lilyputing.com, Tizen Linux running on Google Nexus 7. There's a video here on YouTube. Uh, pretty interesting. Definitely check this out. Uh, for those of you who uh, want to be running Tizen, um, and you've got a Google Nexus 7, pretty sweet. Something to take a look at. From ZDNet, Debian Linux 7, Wheezy, hands-on. That's right. There's a, a nice little hands-on uh, article written by J.A. Watson for Jamie's Mostly Linux Stuff. Uh, definitely give this a try out, especially if you have not tried Debian Linux 7, Wheezy. Uh, Debian is the base distribution for a lot of other distributions, i.e. Ubuntu, Nopix. There's you know, a whole pile of distributions that base their distribution off of Ubuntu, very much like Red Hat uh, is, you know, well, not, it used to be Red Hat. Now it's Fedora is the base distribution for a whole bunch of other distributions uh, where they basically piggyback off of, you know, what's going on there. So definitely give it a look, especially if you want to run Debian directly. From Business Insider, there's a uh, article here. Well, it's not really an article. It's a picture slideshow. It's entitled, What? Here's what people are actually using that $35 Raspberry Pi computer for. One user sets up his Raspberry Pi to function as an uncensored Wi-Fi hotspot to share with others. Interesting. Another guy is using his Raspberry Pi as a display for his daughter's total allowance and things she can buy with her allowance. Interesting. Uh, another person is using it to control a robotic prosthetic knee in his research at the MIT Media Lab. That's pretty cool. Another one is using it as a controller for solenoids for his eye-controlled instruments. He's helping to make disabled people make music. Pretty neat. Uh, a couple of people are using a Raspberry Pi to run an, an, an autonomous two-meter sailboat. All right. Uh, somebody's used it to uh, make it into a laptop. I think we've covered that. The Atrix laptop, was that on uh, Linux Newslog or the Geekinator? I don't remember. Um, somebody used it to build a Wi-Fi robot and mounted a Nerf cannon to it, you know, for science. <laughs> awesome. Um, there, We've got a couple of guys that are attaching a weather balloon, and they had it uh, send a tweet from the stratosphere. This is pretty neat. Um Another guy is using it as the brains for a semi-autonomous tank. Uh, another guy is using his Raspberry Pi to open and close a gigantic skylight. That's actually probably a little overkill. You could do it in a little less processing power, but uh, like an Arduino would probably work really well for something like that. Um, another guy is using it uh, for his secret horn machine unplugs quickly and easy to hide it's not something necessarily that i would condone but still um he another guy's using it to light an led and make it blink and show off to his friends that's a real basic use you can do that with an arduino and uh pretty interesting uh anyway give give it a whirl uh should be some pretty cool ideas in here for um you know, things that you can do with a Raspberry Pi, seeing as it's Linux based and, you know, cheap and easy to get. From uh, consumerelectronicsnet.com, SUSE incorporates Core Raid drivers for Ethernet storage and OpenStack. 
That's right. CoreAid, a leading provider of Ethernet storage solutions today, announced that it has contributed major updates to the open source software initiator for ATA over Ethernet, otherwise known as AOE, in the Linux kernel. The software driver allows any Linux server to serve as a host for an AOE-based storage target with no additional installation required. The latest changes, which deliver a significant boost in storage performance, scalability, and stability, were committed to the Linux kernel through kernel.org, operated by the Linux kernel organization. So pretty cool. Uh, if you need something of that nature, definitely check it out. Over at linux.com, there's a blog post here by Libby Clark. She has uh, this blog post that's entitled, You're Invited to Contribute to the Future of Linux.com. With nearly 1 million visitors a month, we aim to make Linux.com a hub of information for the Linux community and a platform for advocacy for the Linux operating system. Thank you to our readers and community members for your ongoing support of this important resource. As the Linux community grows and technology evolves, so must Linux.com. We are considering some updates to the site to meet these growing needs and need your help to understand what is most important. So they have a five-minute survey that they want you to take. There's a link in the blog post here. So to get to this blog post, go to my website, quicksurf.com. I will have this linked up in the show notes for this episode. Uh, and this episode is Linux News Log, Season 15, Episode 8. So you will see an LNLP pound sign 1508 in the title. And then Linux Mint 15 released and Tizen Linux on Google Nexus 7. Go ahead and pause the video now and go take this uh, survey if you so desire. And uh, definitely uh, try that out. Uh, as part of their thanks for uh, the time and participation, they are offering a chance to win one of two $500 Amazon gift certificates. That's right. You can get 500 bucks for taking the survey. Prizes will be awarded on a random basis from a pool of all those who complete the survey. Please be assured that we will treat any information you provide as strictly confidential. So definitely go take this survey if you want to have somewhat of a say in what happens with linux.com moving forward. Pretty cool. Definitely do that. From embeddedcomputing.com, Wind River advances open source innovation for automotive with iOS connectivity for Linux IVI systems. Wind River continues to help bring the consumer electronics experience into the car with Wind River Connectivity Solution Accelerator for Linux. It allows consumers to connect their iOS devices to Linux-based IVI systems, which is in-vehicle infotainment systems, if uh, you've never heard of that before. So pretty interesting. Um, I've not seen this. Hmm, I don't know quite how to. They've been doing a lot of stuff. This isn't the first time they've done in-vehicle infotainment system stuff, but I've not really seen it gain a lot of traction, at least not here in the U.S. I'm sure in other countries it's probably they've gotten some traction, but I've actually not seen, you know, a whole either that or, you know, the in-vehicle infotainment systems that are here in vehicles, newish, newish vehicles here in the U.S. Um, they may be using it and just not advertising it. I don't know. But uh, anyway, definitely give that a read if, you, if that's something you find interesting. That will do it for this episode of Linux News Log. As always, everything I've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. If, for those of you who have, thank you so much for supporting the show. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.